Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Joy of Puzzles. Today I have for you a puzzle titled Island Time. It was published in 2019 by Buffalo Games. Buffalo Games has been around since 1986 and they are located in, you guessed it, Buffalo, New York. They are privately held companies, so there's not a ton of information out there about them. Um, I was able to find on LinkedIn that they list themselves between the 51 and 200 employees, and they had 66 employees listed on their website, you know, as far as people who have LinkedIn accounts and are associated with them. Um, yeah, they've been around for a while. They make lots and lots of stuff. I have tons of their puzzles. The artist, in this case, is someone named Chuck Pinson. Now, Chuck has quite the impressive collection of artwork. Um, he appears to be pretty, pretty prolific. Uh, you go to his website and you're going to find tons of stuff. And he has a particular style. I mean, the images to me look like almost photographs in the respect that they could be real, but from what I read on his website, these are... Uh, they come straight out of his head, so to speak. He uh, started painting when he was in high school and really didn't take any classes in painting. It's just what you see is the result of years of practice and hard work and, of course, just natural talent. Uh, I do have a link for his home page, which has lots of art to purchase, and also his Facebook page. Uh, so he calls it Art for Inspired Living. Um, yeah, quite beautiful. This puzzle was a thousand pieces. It took just under five hours, four hours and 45 minutes to build. Um, and strategy-wise, I feel like I haven't built what I would classify as a traditional puzzle in quite some time. You know, some sort of nature scene with uh, sky and water and objects in it. And so this was kind of a nice change of pace. Uh, the strategy, of course, is the border. And then a bold color, right? So we, we started with the, the green building in the middle, and then we're naturally drawn to the yellow and red building. I mean, look at this puzzle, and those colors are concentrated, so when you find a piece, more than likely you know where it goes in the puzzle, so it's a, a great starting point. At the same time, while you're doing it, other things catch your eye, you know, so we built some of the beach and some of the chairs and, and some of those other bold objects in the puzzle. It's kind of funny, we always have this goal that we want to establish um, linear and vertical solid lines across the puzzle. <laughs> and it, it doesn't feel like we've made progress until we have one of those. And not every puzzle lends itself to that, but this classic style um, certainly does. And we were quite happy at the end of the first session when we had created the line across where we had all the houses and then we had that little bit of horizon where the water meets the sky in the right hand corner. Uh, <laughs> I know it's a strange thing, it's just our little our victory to ourselves that we've done it. Well, strategy after we built all the buildings, um, you start for me anyway, I start building the transitions, you know, water to beach, sky to, to trees, things of that nature. Um, the water was actually easy to build in this puzzle. Uh, it was, that's not the normally the case, of course normally it's a photograph, but in here there was this one particular wave in the center of it that kind of crests, um, so it gave me uh, a good uh, color scheme to hunt for. And then the sky had some really bold colors that don't appear anywhere else in the puzzle, so that kind of came together. And the last little bit were the trees. The trees were oddly the most difficult part of this. And you would think with the uh, the palm trees and the different shades of green that that wouldn't be so, but it actually was. That was the most hunt and peck part of it. And of course, there's always the, the random pieces that you can't seem to find and you swear are missing and then suddenly you find it and drop that in. So that was our strategy. Um, let's, let's review the puzzle now. I'm going to review the puzzle in four different categories on a scale of 1 to 5. And the first category is the puzzle material quality itself. 
Buffalo makes a pretty decent puzzle. I'm going to give it a 3. It doesn't detract from the build at all. The pieces are exactly what they should be. Uh, the bond between the image and the paperboard is good. Um, yep, it was right, again, right where it should be. 3 Three to me is what I expect, right? Um, <laughs> it's just the way I'm, I'm wired. I don't, I'm not going to give everything a 5 in the world. It's, it's a 3. After the puzzle material quality, I'm going to talk about the cut of the material. And here also is a 3. Uh, the pieces fit well. Uh, they do tout on their box that they uh, are some sort of perfect fit technology. The perfect snap is what they call it. I believe they have that trademarked. Um, yeah, it's fine. Um, it was not above average. Uh, but again, no detraction from the puzzle. You never really doubted where a piece went, you didn't look at it afterwards and go, ooh, that really doesn't go there. So, right where it should be, a 3. Difficulty. Uh, this type of puzzle, again, the classic style, to me, is right in the middle. Uh, I'm going to give it, uh, again, a 3. This puzzle is right where it should be in all those categories. And it, it falls into that uh, particular scheme of having enough distinct colors and enough of bold images that the thousand piece puzzle doesn't take super long. I did most of this myself uh, and it was just under five hours so that's probably average. I, I, again I've said before I've had to readjust my estimate. I used to think that eight hours was average for a thousand piece puzzle but when you build a puzzle a week or two puzzles a week uh, that number's gonna drop. <laughs> it's like anything else. You practice, you practice, you practice, and you get better at it. So my my judgment may be off a little as far as difficulty. So I, I'm still gonna give this one a three. Decent build time and um, right again the the nature of the image makes it that you can actually have a definable strategy as you go into it. Some of the previous ones have been very haphazard because they've been like collages or lots of small images. So. All that aside, three, right where it should be. Okay, final category, frameability. The most subjective of all the categories, my personal opinion, is this a piece of art that I would hang in my house? If this, if I was the type of person that built a puzzle only once, would I seal this puzzle, keep it forever, and hang it somewhere? Well, uh, I'm gonna go with a five, quite honestly. This is legitimately artwork, right? This would hang in a gallery. This would certainly hang in someone's house. Um, there I can think of, I mean, maybe not in the part of the country I live in, but if you live on anything that's semi-tropical, you would love to have this picture hanging uh, with your, right next to your view of the water or the beach or anything of that nature or perhaps it's just something you like to think about all the time and you look at this picture and say someday I'm gonna go someplace like this T to me this is definitely a five um, Chuck does a lot of great work I was actually quite impressed I went to his website and I don't know how many of them they've turned into puzzles but uh, pretty fantastic I look at this and it reminds me of the Thomas Kincaid collection I think that those are really eye-catching just like these are and they are rewarding you know it's a it's a beautiful image that to, to look at afterwards overall not quite linear but I'm gonna give this a three uh, the the really above average thing is the image the rest of it again is exactly where it should be nothing in this puzzle detracts from the build um, so I will definitely build this again well someone loaned me this puzzle so I have to give it back so Maybe I won't build this one again, but I would build more puzzles by Chuck Pier Pinson again, uh, because they are so eye-catching. That's it. That's all I got to say today, <laughs> to be honest. It's a short one. The At the beginning, you may have noticed that when I opened the bag, the puzzle up was already separated in bags, including the border. So there's someone else out there, and it's not just me, that puts the edge pieces in the uh, a separate little bag uh, was helpful. Um, I appreciate everyone that takes an hour. <laughs> an hour, yeah, right. Anyone who takes 10 minutes out of their day to watch one of these videos, uh, if you really like them, go ahead and click the like button, maybe even subscribe to the channel. Hey, you know what? On an off chance, maybe you know someone else who's really bored and has trouble falling asleep and wants to watch one of these videos and you can convince them to subscribe <laughs> to the channel. 
Alright, that's enough out of me. Hey, thanks everyone. I look forward to bringing you more puzzles.